and vouch for that, and the best medical intervention. Unfortunately, he, um, he has had to undergo a small medical procedure. So he's requested me to stand in for him and to read his address. Now the formal part. His Excellency President, uh, President Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa, the State President of South Africa. The Honorable Fakili Majola, the Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry of South Africa. The Honorable David Makura, the Premier of Gauteng. Uh, Councillor Nazuka Best, who unfortunately has just had to leave us. The Executive Mayor of Merifong. Uh, the, the local municipality. Members of the media. Honoured guests and non-executive directors of Corabric. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome and I trust that I've observed all the protocols correctly. I do have an apology from our group chairman, Dr. Rul Causa, who unfortunately cannot be here with us today. Before I continue, I would like to acknowledge the tragedy of the floods in my home province of KwaZulu-Natal and the work that has been done so far to restore normality to the lives of ordinary people. Corabric has been in existence for some 122 years, one of the longest surviving South African companies. Having experienced two world wars, South Africa's own political turmoil, and thankfully, the democratization of South Africa in 1994, and the ongoing journey of South Africa until today. Only companies with great vision and foresight can survive this long, and it has been our commitment of investment in the future that has been so vital to the success. The factory in full production has, not been, has, has been built not just for this year, but for the next 100 years. These levels of investment are made possible by government commitments and the incentives offered by the DTI, and we thank government, and particularly the DTI, for their assistance and cooperative relationship, which has made Questiona possible. It is a privilege that this project has become part of the State President's investment program to which we are fully committed. The factory is acknowledged as the best and most modern fa brick factory in the world and the largest on the African continent and, th and through utilizing the latest technology will produce 100 million high quality face bricks per year, providing thousands of skilled downstream jobs in the building industry where bricks remain the preferred safest and most durable building material. These downstream jobs are supported by Corabric bricklaying schools and in, in the field trainers around the whole of South Africa. This gives us both classroom and on the job skills training. Your Excellency, through your initiative of the State President's Investment Program, incentive programs uh, from DTI and Corbrick commitment to South Africa, I'm proud to say that investments like this will hold the country in good stead for the next 100 years. Thank you to all of you and enjoy the best brick, world, uh, brick factory in the world. It is now my pleasure to welcome to the podium the Honourable De Deputy Minister, Fakili Majola, who will introduce His Excellency, the State President. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Premier, I won't tell you what the President just said to me. <laughs> His, His Excellency, President Cyril Ramaphosa, the Premier of Gauteng, Mr. David Makura, the Mayor of Merafo, Ms. Nozuko Best, who has just left us, the CEO of Corobrick, Mr. Nick Booth, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm honored to be part of this milestone event today to launch the, the launch of the new coral brick manufacturing plant appropriately named Pastin. The inauguration of this factory by coral brick is a cause for celebration. Investment is critical 
for economic growth and development, and government is intensifying its efforts to attract quality investments that will assist in achieving our economic goals and objectives of enhancing the country's industrial capacity. South Africa remains an attractive and lucrative investment destination, Mr. President. The return on investments are high, with plenty of opportunities for both foreign and domestic investors. Mr. President, as the DTIC, we are excited about this investment because it is fully aligned with our reimagined re industrial strategy. We undertook to support improved industrial performance and competitiveness of local companies. And in this regard, we have supported Coral Brick with the Section 12 I's incentive scheme. This allowed them to introduce the latest technology that will lead to energy efficiency, which will contribute to our country reducing its carbon footprint. Our economic vision is to lift the rate of inclusive economic growth. We are very pleased that to boost worker empowerment in the company, 45.09% of their total share equity is under the control of historically disadvantaged South Africans. Mr. President, it is also noteworthy that Coral Brick started a workers' trust with 26% of shareholding residing with their, with their staff. Once again, congratulations to Coral Brick on this achievement. Your commitment to government economic recovery efforts and confidence in growing the South African manufacturing sector is commendable. On this note, I would like to introduce to you the visionary leader behind our economic reconstruction and recovery plan and the inspiration behind our reimagined industrial strategy. The President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you. Let's be seated, please. Program Director and the Premier of Gauteng, Premier David Makura, Deputy Minister Fikile Majola. Now, the Executive Mayor of Mirafong, Ms. Nozu Kobest, was here earlier, and uh, she decided to leave after looking at all of you, and she had her suspicions, <laughs> thinking that you might want to be disruptive <laughs> and stop me from speaking. And she did not want to be part of it. <laughs> so she's not here because of the way you all look. And I said, no, they don't look so menacing. They don't look like they are about to start showing placards and all that. And I'm glad you're smiling away. And when I saw some of you having drinks, I got worried. I said, no, she may be right. Maybe they are, they are drinking uh, whiskeys and uh, beers and all of that. Uh, I'm really glad to be here. I greet also the chairman of Corobrick and the executive, the chief executive officer, as well as the chief operations officer and directors and the staff of Corobrick. I'm also particularly pleased to see old friends here. I believe that Rural Cosa is the chairperson, uh, either of the group or whatever. But I'm also very pleased to see an old friend like Mr. Andy Leith, who's one of the shareholders. A uh, number of years ago, he spoke to me about uh, this investment. And quite frankly, I never thought it would go anywhere because 
I thought what he knew about operations was so dangerous. He's a financial person. But I'm glad to, to see him here today. I really am truly delighted to be here because <clears throat> this initiative <clears throat> and the factory that we are launching today is part of the investment journey that we started uh, four years ago and uh, this year we held our fourth investment conference and I said that we want to move the commitments that were made at our investment conference to real projects that we can feel and touch and see. We did say then we wanted to see foundations being sunk, we want to hear the sound of bricks being laid, and also see cranes. And we said that we want to see factories being built from the commitments that were made, and we also wanted to see people being employed. And here today at Quastina, we are seeing the fulfillment, the real fulfillment of the investment commitment that was made at our investment conference. Here today we are seeing the results of the 800 million rand investment that Korobik pledged at the 2019 investment conference. Now this facility is impressive even before I go to see the factory works. I'm told that it is the largest brick making project in the world outside of China. Certainly the largest on our own continent. And this, ladies and gentlemen, deserves a round of applause. It joins Corobrick's extensive operations in the country, which include, I'm told, 13 clay brick plants and 14 kilns. Now this investment is an example of the productive partnership that is being forged between business and government to grow our economy. And I'm particularly pleased that our Department of uh, Competition, uh, DTIC, Trade and Competition, is very much a part of this because that is where we want to see our government processes supporting business and enabling jobs to be created. Now since its founding in 1902, Korobrick has truly been a household name in South Africa. You would not be able to speak about a brick without adding Korobrick. The company is known for being a pioneer in manufacture and supply of material in support of our national investment drive, the investment Korobrick made in 2019 has now actually increased, I'm told, to 1 billion rand as the company made an additional 200 million investment to expand its concrete operations also in KZN. The manufacturing sector is one of the priority industries in our economy and continues to play a vital and a pivotal role in the creation of employment opportunities. And the construction of Quastina, where we are today, I'm told created a temporary employment for some 1,000 people. Of particular significance is the 30 people from the surrounding community who participated here as bricklayers and who were taught bricklaying right from scratch. At a time when COVID-19 has had such a detrimental impact on livelihoods and income security, I wish to commend Corobrick for being a reliable employer of some 2,500 people at your various facilities across the country. Now we are an economy that was 
devastated by COVID-19. Much as we sought to manage COVID-19 and navigate our way around these very dangerous paths, we still lost two million jobs. And for an economy like ours, which was precariously positioned over a number of years, to lose two million jobs in just a 12-month period is quite a devastation. And we're very pleased that as we begin to recover, we have companies like Corobrick who are living up to the commitments they made and are creating jobs and making sure that our economy move forward, moves forward. Great companies are built by investing in people and we are greatly encouraged by Corobrick's efforts to empower its workers. I'm told, as uh, Deputy Minister Majola said here, that Corobrick has established a staff trust in which 26% of the company's share capital resides for workers. Now this is truly something that is praiseworthy. We're delighted to see that your company, Mr. Booth, is actually empowering its employees in the way that you have taken steps to do so. Now this staff shareholding has fostered what I would call a common interest in the well-being and continued performance of the company, all the while providing a stable employment environment. An environment in which the people who work here, your workers, feel that they are part and parcel of the fortunes that are being created and they themselves will be able to be part of the future of this company going forward. So I commend you for investing in the next generation through also a bursary scheme for children of staff by building training centers and your sponsorship of the Corobrick Architectural Student of the Year program. I am particularly pleased to hear about your efforts to reduce the company's carbon footprint. I understand that Kwasina will generate 20% of its electricity from renewable resources and that there are also plans to reduce natural gas con consumption for the kilns by at least two-thirds. Now, Corobrick has embraced the fourth industrial revolution as well by pursuing new technology that will enhance human-machine interaction for efficient production. And I'm told that a number of your operations are actually executed quite efficiently. The newly built fully automated production line acquired by the company means that new skills will be developed here. It is significant that Guastina, with a production capacity of 100 million bricks per annum, will allow the company to broaden its export market to our neighboring countries such as Botswana, Lesotho, Malawi, even as far afield as Mauritius and Zambia, as well as Zimbabwe. Now, in the context of the African continental free trade area, Corobrick has the potential to even more than double its footprint and use the plentiful economic opportunities that are given rise to by the African continental free trade area, and in doing so to create more job opportunities for the sustainable growth of our economy. I've often said that infrastructure is the flywheel of economic growth and development. And uh, it is this journey that you've been on for more than a hundred years of being in the infrastructure space which will continue being the flywheel of our economic growth. Infrastructure projects are vital to our economic recovery 
particularly because infrastructure has a multiplier effect throughout the economy, but also more importantly, throughout societies, as it has an immediate and direct impact on improving livelihoods. Two years ago, our cabinet approved the infrastructure investment plan, which is made up of 62 projects from all three spheres of government, as well as our state-owned enterprises and the private sector, of course. Now, government's public investment expenditure program will provide an impetus to the growth in the sale of coral brick projects. We have, over time, seen how our fixed investment has been tapering down as a country from both the public sector as well as from the private sector. But having realized that, we can only have economic growth if our fixed investment does start to tick up. And it is here that Coral Brick will have great opportunity to participate in various projects that are going to mushroom throughout the country. Coral Brick continues to play a key role in government's infrastructure initiatives through the construction of a number of public institutions such as the Nelson Mandela University Faculty of Law where you provided a lot of bricks, the Umkombani Cultural Heritage Museum, the Northwest University Val Administration, uh, and building that was put up, the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital, the Salt Lake Hospital, our university, and many others. Now, as we proceed with the implementation of our infrastructure, the demand for building materials is going to grow quite substantially. It is our intention as much that as much of these materials that are going to be utilized should be sourced locally. And Costina is about utilizing local material, which we appreciate very much. Now, your investment here has definitely, without any shadow of doubt, made an important contribution to our ambitious investment drive of 1.2 trillion rand over five years. Now, when we held our conference earlier this year, we found that with the commitments that had been made, we had hit 95% of the 1.2 trillion. So we are definitely going to exceed our 1.2 trillion rand uh, investment, but we will be hoping and wishing and praying and cajoling you to come up with another billion rand investment when we hold our fifth investment conference next year so that we exceed. Now, I want to see another Quastina being built in another part of our country. So you can just come to us and we will tell you where it should happen and uh, you can just make it happen. So we are really delighted uh, that you are one of those companies that has truly lived up to the commitments we met, you made. We did take you seriously even then. And I can promise you, we take you even more seriously now. That is why I'm here. That is why the, the, the Premier is here. And that is why the Mayor will soon return, now that she can see that there's, there's no disruption here. So we thank you, Korobrik, for making a vital contribution in a very literal sense, in helping to rebuild our economy. We look forward to having continuous engagements with yourselves and other companies in the manufacturing space, as well as in the infrastructure space. And as we say in our political speak, we say forward with Coral Brick forward. Keep moving forward. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, yeah, another question in the next year, I think probably a bridge too far, but maybe in four or five years we can talk. <laughs> um, what, what happens now, everybody, I'm going to ask the, the, the State President to join me